Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's video is gonna be on parasitic infections, especially one known as blastocystis hominis and Hashimoto's. An interesting study just came by my desk last week, linking or actually making an association between a patient who had a blastocystis hominis infection, hives, as well as Hashimoto's, an autoimmune thyroid condition. And this person's blasto was treated, and over time, we saw, or in the study, they showed a decrease in thyroid antibodies as well as an increase in thyroid function. And this is one of the first times in the scientific literature there's been this association of infections, especially around parasitic infections. There are some with Lyme, and there are some with Yersinia enterocolitica, a couple other infections like that, H. pylori as well, but the first time with blasto. And my hypothesis is that these infections are affecting the immune system, they're affecting, affecting the gut, they're affecting absorption of nutrients that are affecting the immune system. So let's dig in and break this down. So off the bat, this study here, the Journal of Infectious, the Journal of Infection in Developing Countries, 2014 article, I'll put it below here in the references, just click on the link and you'll be able to see the whole PDF. But what they found was, they found a gentleman who had a chronic hives, urticaria, he also had Hashimoto's. Now, if we look at his thyroid numbers off the bat, let's look in the bottom right hand corner if you can see, his TSH was 8.48, now that's a problem. Because in, even in today's country, anything over five, five and a half is flagged by LabCorp Quest, depending on what side of the country you live. Uh, I always joke with my patients, the easiest way to cure someone with a, a five on their TSH is to fly them, or a five on their TSH is to fly them from the West Coast to the East Coast, because the reference range for TSH goes from 4.5 uh, in California to 5.5 on the East Coast. And a little problem with uh, lab standardization, but you can see what happens. This person here is an 8.48, very high across all lab standards. And we can see here, just four years later, the TSH dropped down to 2.88, much better. We like it below 2.5, but it's a significant improvement. Now you can see this person came in with a, actually a higher TSH, I'm sorry, actually a higher free T3, 12.4 to be exact. Now, just to be specific here, the reference range in this lab, in this country, was six to 10 for the T3. So you can see they actually had a higher amount of T3. And well, the reason why is, well, if we have our thyroid gland like this, and we're attacking it with various antibodies, right? Various antibodies are attacking it. That's gonna create all kinds of inflammation and thyroid hormone actually spits out. And that thyroid hormone can easily cause its uh, serum levels to go up, T3, total T3, T4, et cetera. Now in this lab, we didn't actually see the T4 um, go up that high. T4 actually stayed relatively low, and what you can see, the antibodies are through the roof. This is TPO, and this is thyroglobulin. Anything, just so you know, anything above five or six for these is considered raised. So we just went over a lot there. Let's back up, break it down. I'll take a deep breath for you guys. TSH was high. Automatically, we consider that hypothyroidism, right? Because the pituitary is screaming to the thyroid, make thyroid hormone. We're seeing free T3 on the higher end. Why? Explain the mechanism above. Autoimmune thyroiditis, hormone is spitting out of the thyroid gland. Not so much T4, but more with T3. We're also seeing TPO and thyroglobulin antibodies raised. So the thyroid's being attacked. Now, four years later, right? Fast forward. 2.88 the TSH, dropping down into normal range. Free T3 is smack dab in the middle of the range. T4 is at 13.4, kind of at the bottom of the range, but T3 is in a good place, so we're not even worried about that. And again, TPO and thyroglobulin antibody are all negative. That's a good thing. So what does this mean? What does this mean to anyone checking this article out or this video out? What this means is that there's now a proven association, a lot of functional medicine doctors already know this, there's a proven association between these gut infections, especially blasto, and I can hypothesize it goes across the board with all parasites, Giardia, Entamoeba histolytica, crypto, etc. that they have an effect on the gut. We know this because of the symptoms they cause. They cause diarrhea, bloating, gas, uh, even eating disorders, digestive issues, I've seen it cause brain fog, and even joint pain, non-specific gut issues, and the immune system. So we know it has a major effect on this, so it makes sense if we address these infections, the person's thyroid gets better. So now in this person's case, 
they were put on metronidazole or flagyl for 14 days. They came back. They actually had them on thyroid hormone in the beginning to treat the TSH. They were able to pull them off thyroid hormone in two weeks. And then each year, if you get the PDF, click below, you'll see the antibodies drop and drop and drop and drop. And the reason why is, is we're affecting the immune system. Not only the immune system, but we're affecting digestion. because so we can absorb and digest and break down nutrients better, that affects our gut because our gut's 70% of those um, immune cells are right in the malt and the gallt in the stomach and in the small intestine. So if we have healthy gut flora, healthy gut bacteria, and we're digesting well, we're going to have less inflammation and a better immune function, at least in the gut. So some of the symptoms, I already mentioned some of the symptoms. The problem with blasto is with these parasites, because they affect the gut, because they affect absorption, because they can make your gut leaky, right? Those tight junctions, the tight junction, this is inside your gut here, can come apart due to stress and inflammation, especially due to infection and poor foods. And that can cause undigested particles, whether it's LPS from bacteria or undigested foods like dairy and gluten, that can get into the bloodstream and exacerbate the immune system. Again, when the immune system goes up, what happens to all my little samurai stores and, uh, and little Chinese stars over here, right? They attack the thyroid gland more. And that's why the thyroid gets, gets warped up and, and destroyed because of all these antibodies. So if we can cool down the attack, if we can kind of you know, uh, pull the, you know, the dogs off the thyroid, so to speak, right? That's gonna help the thyroid gland repair and recover. So treatment options. Now the problem is I don't like metronidazole or flagyl for blasto. There's one study I looked at earlier today before I created this video that found in a study of 12 people, flagyl only treated the blasto four out of the 12 patients. Um, I find the herbs tend to do much better. I'm a natural functional medicine doctor, so my bias is towards the herbs. Combination of wormwood and oil of oregano and a high dose of berberines can be very powerful. The problem is there's a lot of co-infections with blasto. We see blasto and H. pylori tend to come together a lot, even blasto and giardia. So if you just treat the blasto, but there's an H. pylori infection in there, well, you may not get all the way better. And when we retest a lot of patients, we'll find other new infections. So I urge you, if you have a digestive issue or a thyroid issue, and you're not sure what's causing what, get checked by a functional medicine doctor so you're not missing maybe a co-infection that could be hiding there with it. Because if you get rid of one, well, the evil twin on the other side is still there. So let's recap, Be deep breath here. This journal article, take a look at it. Antibodies improve over time when we get rid of gut infections. That's the take home message. Now it's not a proven, it's not a proven absolute law, but we see this association across the board and I see it with my patients every week. I treat about three to five blasto infections every single week hundreds a year, so I'm, I'm, I see this quite better, quite frequently, and I notice patients get better when these infections are treated and eradicated. Not to mention the symptoms that are outside of just gut symptoms. So let's say you only have gut symptoms, well, there's a great chance you have blasto. What if you don't have gut symptoms? Well, joint pain, brain fog, fatigue, anxiety, mood stuff, that could still be behind the parasite infection because anytime you affect gut absorption of nutrients, well, those nutrients make neurochemicals and hormones, and they can have an effect on the gut and inflammation. We gotta dig in deep. Treatment, like I mentioned, they can inhabitate together, all right? Co-infections, Giardia, Blasto, H. pylori, they can come in together. And one little cute little tip here, all right, a little factoid actually I found. Blasto, the reason why I got its name Blasto, Blasto cystis hominis, is because the infection literally blasts open. When it goes from the cyst state, this is when it's the most infectious. It goes from a cyst to an amoeboid. This is where it binds in the gut. It binds in the gut as an amoeboid. It grabs onto the gut lining and it has the vacuolar and the granular state. But when it goes from being a cyst to a vacuolar state, it actually blasts open and ruptures. And this is kind of how it's got its name, blasto, because it literally blasts open. And it's theorized that in the blasting, part of that infection, that's where a lot of pain and symptoms and nausea and digestive symptoms happen in this rupturing, blasting open stage. So cool little factoid of how blasto actually got its name. So again, if you're dealing with any thyroid issues or digestive issues and you think there could be a gut infection, you're like, you know what, maybe, maybe this is present in this whole symptom of things and you wanna dig in deeper, click on screen or click below and make sure you subscribe to more great info coming your way. Thanks, this is Dr. J signing off.
Have a great night.